team. Welcome back to the Man That Can Project podcast. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. We've got an amazing guest on the show today. Actually, my current physio, Paul Pegler from Start Training, an amazing, amazing guy. And Paul's been treating me for, I think we worked out on the episode, around two years, which is awesome. And every time we catch up, you know, we catch up weekly. We always, you know, he fixes my broken body, but we all always have some really phenomenal chats just about, you know, whatever challenges I'm dealing with or vice versa. And um, we always joke about, you know, Paul's about 10 years ahead of all the challenges that I'm currently facing. So his advice is always from experience as well, which I, I love how he puts it into perspective. In this episode, we talk about, uh, you know, being able to open up, understand who you are as a man and be your, that authentic version of yourself and understand how at different points in your life you need to sort of adapt and change and, uh, you know, just how Paul, we could have gone on for hours really, how Paul shares this is really insightful and, and you know, a heap of laughs along the way as well. So before we dive into the episode, <clears throat> I'm really grateful for everyone who's listening to this. You know, yesterday I got an email from iTunes just mentioning how the Man at Cam Project podcast had peaked at 153 in the iTunes charts for health and fitness. Now, I didn't even know, I don't know how all that sort of stuff works, but I'm super grateful that that's happened. And now it's also sort of ticked off that competitive side of me where I want to crack the top 100 there. I also uh, was told that we peaked at 72 in the Czech Republic. So for everyone who's listening from the Czech Republic, awesome, really appreciate that. And for anyone who's listening at all, Thank you guys so much for the support as well. The more you listen, the more you share, and the more you leave reviews, it's just going to help it keep climbing up that chart. And as a result, you know, more and more men are going to get impacted by the stuff that we talk about on this show. So thank you so much for your support. As for now, we're going to dive into the episode with Paul. You're going to get a heap of value. And as I mentioned from time to time, if you want to grab a pen and paper or a notepad out to take some notes, definitely do that. But you'll be able to find uh, all of the Man at Camp Project details and all of Paul's details in the show notes below. But enjoy the episode. So, Paul, great to have you on the show, man. Thank Appreciate you, buddy. Appreciate for coming been in. looking forward to this for ages. It's been fucking... I reckon we've spoken about it for... Months. I reckon months. close to 10 months. I reckon. At least. Yeah, and I reckon. Finally, we've, we've made it happen. Um, but it's super exciting for me because you've been treating me for I reckon 18 months plus two years right yeah it would be probably, probably two years well, it was probably what was it that that show that the guys did in Redland Redland yeah. so that, that it would be it would be at least eight, two yeah. years I would say yeah so two years you've been putting together my broken body but also it's been a, a fun sesh every week where we get to download on each other yeah and it's you good. give me life advice and uh, it's always helpful and we were just uh, chatting before as we were testing the microphone <laughs> and you just went into it and I was sitting there going, I want to pull you up, but I want to listen. Yeah, I that's pull it. You up, but I want, I want to, to hear what happens. I was like, so we were stuck in this uh, this little trance. So hopefully we'll, we'll cover some of that sort of stuff as yeah. we dive in. But before we do sort of go wherever this podcast goes, and I know the exciting thing and my intention for this is that you've got so much that you sh- you share with me every week, but I feel a lot of people will be able to get that value from mm. from you and wherever this goes I know it will be awesome but yeah. let's just start by introducing well, I'd love to give you I know I've given a little background on yourself yeah. but tell us who you are and what you're about I'll, I'll hand this little we do this, have for this, those this who are listening mic. to our podcast <laughs> I bought this podcast called Blue and it looks like a black snowball it's actually got the snowball written on it uh, the thing is massive and normally I have a good setup where there's a table there and we don't have to touch it but some things have happened anyway, and we're, we were in a makeup studio, so we're going to be passing this. Uh, it's a bit more intimate, though. It you is know, little... handing it over. You know, it's just quite nice. Well, we get to take a moment to actually pass it there and think <laughs> and about, think our about it. Think about it. It's awesome. You know, and people watching this can laugh at us as we sit there going, "When do I take it off you or not?" And, and it's just that uncomfortableness of, yeah, yeah, it'll be great. Going to be closer in your <laughs> armpit. <laughs> oh. as, as... Well, hopefully by the end of it, you know, we'll be snuggled up together and it'll be it'll be a beautiful <laughs> sharing game. sharing moment between all of us. I'm excited for it. <laughs> oh, look, it's the only reason I'm here. So That's why I set it up. <laughs> <laughs> just dim the lights. Yeah. I appreciate the flowers you've put on the corner, though, as well. Like, that was a lovely touch. That was not supposed to be spoken about. <laughs> 
Um, but who am I? Who, who, oh God, Jesus. In what context do you want to know who am I? Well, I, I guess mean, if, if someone were to ask you that, like, how would you respond? Because I know, you know, as you, as you said, you, you're a business owner, you're a yeah. rugby tragic, you're a father, yeah. you're a husband, but yeah. like, I guess if you if you could take five minutes or yeah I'm not timing but let's just assume. I find it I find it really strange because it's interesting actually because I I thought about this quite a bit when we were originally talking about coming onto the podcast and um it's, so, it's such an interesting question like who am I because the the very simple answer is I have no idea like I have absolutely no I have been so many things in my life like I have been. I have been a, a, a drunken idiot in my younger years. I have been a a rugby tragic, as you said. Um, Irishman, Irish, mate. These guys oh, love you. We, we do, and we and do rugby. it well. But, look, I thought about this, and, and, and to be honest, without going massively mad, because this would be a rabbit hole you could down, I think, um, I don't know. I don't know who I am. And, and that was something, I think, that scared me for a very long time, and it's something that drove me to to where I am today and for years I got out of uni- I got out of high school I went to university you know I made the decision that I wanted to get out of Ireland I moved to London I didn't enjoy high school I was I was one of those awkward kids at high school do you know what I mean I didn't have a I had friends but no meaningful kind of like I was like something's always missing there's always something not quite there yeah. do you know what I mean so I was like right I'm gonna go to England I'm gonna go to London now why London? Oh, because now I come from a place in, called Skivering in West Cork in Southern Ireland. Which I've been to Cork. Yeah, I, I would imagine that zero point zero zero one percent of the people listening to this go, oh, I know Skivering. It's a wonderful place. It is in the fucking arse end of nowhere. Like we are five k past bumfuck. I don't know on the bottom of Ireland. Like population nine hundred and forty people is where I lived. Like tiny. Yeah. Right. And I was like, I need to get out. I don't know me. And this is the interesting thing. Like, I didn't, I didn't ask those big questions. Like, I was a seventeen-year-old kid who didn't sit there contemplating the universe and wondering where my place was. Like, I was like, this is a bit shit. I need to do something else. So I went to to London, and you know, I, I landed in London. My old man came with me. He stayed for the weekend, and I'll, I'll never forget the 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 Monday morning. It was about eight a.m. Monday morning. I'm at what they call Holloway Road Tube Station, which is right in the middle of London. Um, I'm standing there. I'm surrounded by high-rises, right? Skibbereen, the tallest building, is three stories. Maybe four. <laughs> Still? No, oh, yeah, actually, probably. Maybe four at a push. Yep. Yeah? And I explain this to people all the time. It's four stories. I knew two black people my entire time growing up, and they were two brothers. Yeah? Awesome guys. Loved them. Yeah, brilliant, really good friends of mine. One was in a year younger than school, one was older. But that was it. Like, I met two black people, no Asians, no anybody. So here I am in London, Holloway Road, 8 a.m., Monday morning. Three days earlier, I was in Skibbereen. Yep. Surrounded by high rises, surrounded by (laughs) fucking every culture you can imagine. My old man turns around to me and uh, he shakes my hand and he goes... You know, off to the airport now. If there's any problems, let me know. I have two bits of advice for you. Don't get arrested. Don't get on the tabloids. You'll be fine. Turns his back. Gone. So here am I, 17, two 18 wise years. bits of advice. <laughs> That's right. 18 years of age, standing in London going, fuck my life, where are we? So I just, you know, so when I talk about, like, who am I? I'm like, I have no idea. I'm in London. I'm trying to find out. I went through university. <clears throat> That's a big story that we'll probably jump in and out of through this. I did not knowing anything. You know, I partied, I went I went hard, I had a good time. Still had no idea. Yep. You know. <clears throat> I, I, I left university, um oh, the issues, you know, I didn't enjoy academia, I didn't enjoy schooling, uh, I had issues of dyslexia and things like that, which again I'm sure we'll we'll dive back into. Um but, you know, I was like I don't know what I'm going to be. I have a degree. I hated it because I hated academia. And I was like, I'm not going to work in this. I was running a pub. Um, I met my now wife, who's probably, I put down as the one person that has probably got me to where I am now, has probably been the sole reason as to 
who I am. Mm. Not me, because I was fucking useless. Um, so met her. She's an Australian. She was backpacking. It was a, you know the eternal romantic the chances, yeah man. the eternal romantic story. I was a I was a broke uni student working at a pub. She was a was the broke made after you guys. Oh, possibly, you know broke. She was a broke Aussie backpacker, you know working in a pub. We met in London. Who who would have guessed? Uh, her visa ran out. She's two and a half years there. They're like right, you got to go. So she's like, oh, I'm going back to Brisbane. I'm like, fuck, I've got nothing else here, so yeah. I'll come with you. I legitimately 100% sold or gave away everything I owned. I walked away. I actually 100% without lying, there is a flat, or not now anymore, but there was a flat in London that was fully kitted out with like furniture, computers, clothes that I literally walked out, closed the door and left and never went back. <laughs> Just fucking ah. left everything. I arrived in Brisbane with a backpack, and that is all the worldly possessions I owned. Anyway, clean slate, just gone. No baggage. So, so this is me still figuring out who I am. And this is, and as I said, like there's not a deep meaning behind this. There's not a. I was traveling the world to find my deeper soul. This is me going. I don't know fucking who I'm. Let's go try this. But yeah, you decided to do something like yeah. Just- that's it and it wasn't a voyage of discovery it was just me I don't know so it used to worry me for a very long time like I was like I don't know who I am I'm drifting through life I'm, I'm and, and so I've played many many roles as I said but now honestly I'm quite comfortable with it yep. like I think I've come to the conclusion that who you are is not who you're going to be like I think it's a very fluid thing and 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 i think i made peace with that a long time ago i think there's this you know there's this perception that we at a certain age you need to know who you are and this is who you're going to be yeah, you know you you're, you're you've yeah. left university get a career find a wife have kids so that when you're now 23 years of age when you are 70 you know who you are you and people fuck up. that's right and people talk about oh have you you know finding yourself you need to know who you are you need to have your passion like fuck man at 23 years of old I didn't know what my passion was my passion was a Friday night out in the beers and I, I think this is one of the big things that I've kind of picked up since then that I've come really comfortable with is who I am now is the best person for me right, right now. now but it doesn't necessarily mean who I'm going to be in 10 years it time it doesn't define who you can be right? no 100% look a perfect example of this is 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 what we were just talking about um, presently so as of next week in the clinic, I'm, I'm cutting back on my hours. Yep. Now, for anyone who knows me, that's just epic. I've worked a 70-hour week always. You as know. As I've known you. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a 5, 5.30 a.m. first patient on the bed till a 7 p.m. every yep. day. But that was who I needed to be to be the clinician to build it. That's who I needed to be then. Yep. Now, I have the most amazing, beautiful 8-year-old daughter who is the center of my universe with with Claudia who is the reason why we're here um, and who I need to be now is a dad to her does that make sense yeah 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 so I think four years ago five years ago when she was super young and really dependent on, on my wife to give her everything and obviously my emotional support she needed but she just needed to me be around and she needed my wife more now she's Eight, she's become really self-aware. It's yeah. fucking scary, man. Eight years of age, they hit. It's like someone flicks a switch. They hit a new stage of their development, and they suddenly go away from going. The only person important is mom and dad, and I live in this bubble, and they protect yep. me. At eight years of age, they realize there's a world, and they become self-aware. Yeah, yeah. And holy shit, <laughs> it's just. But this is where she needs that. This is where she needs, a, 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 in my opinion, I'm not saying I'm right, but in my opinion, a strong you know uh influence mm-hmm. strong male influence to, to 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 help her with stuff so you know who i am or who i'm going to be now is more centered around the dad so i'm dropping back from clinic not massively but i'm cutting hours out of wednesdays cutting hours out of thursdays i'm freeing my time up so that i'm there for her when she needs me it's interesting though like you make decisions based around that you don't like a lot of people i feel are afraid to make a decision. Just hold the big, the big oh, black, sorry, the big black. <laughs> pass the big black snowball over. The big, snowball black, over. The big snowball. It says blue, but it's black. Uh, but the the people are afraid to make decisions because they 
are worried about they feel like they're locked yeah. into that decision yeah. and I, I think that's exactly right I think people sit there and they will just get cozy and yeah just that's why I know yeah that's it we'll just together. nozzle in look I think that's the thing I think people are like I need to know who I am I'm 30 years of age I need to know I, I should know and then when, when things come up in life that they they don't know about or was unplanned and they're like but this doesn't fit into the who I am to the picture of who I am. Correct. So am I really who I am? Have I been living a lie all along, or or, or shit? I've got it wrong. I've, I've like the last ten years have been a waste. It's and so much pressure. It's like yeah, and this is the thing that like, people can never answer these questions. Mm. But like at the end of the day, it's just like like you said, you are who you are right in this very moment. Yeah. So therefore, you've decided that's who you are. But yeah. when you understand behavioral flex flexibility, yeah. Right, and you go, okay, well, something that I value is like growth, and I know mm-hmm. who I am right now, and what I do right now might be completely different yeah. in 10 years, but, yep. and how I'm going about doing all yeah. those things may change as well, and I'm okay with that. And that's right, it's it's fluid, and, and on top of that as well, like, I really believe that our growth isn't linear. Does that make sense? Fucking I nice. really believe that, that you know, I, I'm here, and, and then these experiences push me to the next level to be the better person within this realm whereas i really believe you're the best person you need to be right now so for the last 10 15 years i've been the best version of me as a clinician Mm -hmm. but the best version of me as a clinician doesn't make me the best version of me as a as a dad correct so i now need to sidestep and and i'm not leaving that and that's important to believe it's not about end games it's not about full stops and kind of going i've done that now i now i need to change it's like you just you move to the next level like you've got these constant movements and constant lines that you work towards mm. do you know what i mean and everything makes you up you're the sum of your parts so i think what so many people are thinking like they think that they need to be this linear position well, that everything moves me forward and it's fucking exactly and men are especially guilty of it we 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 thrive in our careers or that's what yeah. we feel where we feel where we're supposed to yeah, head, and then we go. Well, just because I'm thriving as a, in my career means I'm a good dad as well. One hundred percent. I'm and a that's, good partner. That's so right. Bullshit. It doesn't. T- <laughs> fuck yeah, it is. It doesn't tie in. Like you have to put focus at yeah. certain areas at certain times. Correct. And that's just the reality of life. And you are neither a success or a failure for moving from one to the other. Yeah, you just do what is in, like priorities or you value right at that now. point in time. Whatever or... needs to be done right now is, is is the person you need to be. You need to be. And it's like fluid. you said, the yeah, fluid, flu, fluidity is like we get attached to a certain identity. It's like you, you might have the identity as such and such, or I had it as yeah. an athlete, or you know, a dad. And at some point, like um, things change, and it's it's about being like, okay. I played that role right now, but for now, mm. I'm going to step into this role. How yeah. can I do that to the best of my ability, rather yeah. than going fuck? Footy's yeah. done. I I don't know what what's yeah. next for me I'm, and I I'm think, stuck and that's and that was a, that was the thing that I fought with a lot and that was the thing that created a lot of pressure and stress in, in me was I didn't realise that you could be multiple things like I was like if I'm putting all of my focus into my career and I've had these conversations with Claudia quite a bit and she used to to, to kind of talk me through it and she'd support me because I'd come home and I'd be like I just feel like I'm failing she was what do you mean I said I'm always at work I'm never at home you're a mm. single mom Monday to Friday you know, I feel that like that 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 Bella doesn't know who I am. Like I'm just, and she used to always be saying, "You're doing the best that you can do for us right now." Correct. You're fine. And so I guess the the point was like I was like, because I'm really focused on the the clinic, I'm failing in these other elements. As opposed to going, these other elements right now, aren't what I need to be. It doesn't mean I'm ignoring them. It doesn't mean I'm failing at them. It just means it's it's priorities. I mean, you, right you now I need to have this. the opportunity to cut back and do what you're doing now. Had yeah. you not focused on it earlier, a hundred percent. If I didn't do what I did back then, we would not be in the position we're in right now. Which means what would have happened? It's it's the whole jack of all trade, master of none. Mm. What would have happened is the clinic would be going okay, but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be as successful as it is. Yep. Which means I would have had to keep working. So what you would have found is in 10 years 15 years time i'm still chipping to try to get it and yeah. I, and what i've done is i fail well, not fail fails a terrible world where i explain oh. why in a minute because i'm i'm a big believer in failure you should search failure yeah but it's not that i would have failed but 
I would have never mastered anything. I would be chipping away, so I would have been kind of a substandard dad, a substandard clinician, because I never right. put focus on one thing. Mm. Does that make sense? But the moment you went, right here, right now, this is what I need to be. This is where I need to be, yep. and that will change. Yep. So, And when it comes time to change, having the strength to, to go, do. to put that aside and take on the next thing, and have the strength to do that in terms of not sitting there going, oh, I'm not failing at this or I'm turning my back at this, but going right now, the party is here. Because as I said, look, I, failure, failure is an interesting word. And my personal mm. feeling on it is, is it's been used with such negative connotations for so long. Fucking oath. We but I, it. failure, if, you should search failure. Do you know what I mean? You know, show me, show me a person who's never, tri- what, what's that saying? Show me a person who's never failed and I will show you a person who's never I've tried. tried. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, all of the greatest leaps forward in me, personally, professionally, emotionally, have come when I fucked up. Yep. Like, royally, royally been at the bottom. You know what I mean? I I, I really, truly believe we should, we should, um, we should seek failure. Don't sit there going, I'm going to do this to fuck it up. But don't Find be afraid that if yeah, it fucks yeah. up, it's good. There's no bad. Like, so many people sit within an area because, look, oh, I don't want to fail. And, things. Look, and I did it. Look, I did it for years. The, the, the biggest, the biggest cop-out I had probably, and I did this for years, and, and it, it's the perfect example of where failure is a good thing, is uh, I, had a, I had a confidence issue with myself as a business owner. I was like, I, I was confident in myself as a clinician, yep. but I, I just had no confidence with running my own business. I, I always in my head felt I need support. I need, yep. I need a business partner. I need somebody else to tell me what to do in case shit goes wrong hmm. because I don't have the confidence in myself to make those big decisions. Fuck no. So the two biggest fuck ups in my life came as a result of that because I never had the confidence to fail. I was always worried if I do and I'm not good enough and if I'm not good enough the, the business will fail and so I was terrified of failure so I went into a couple of businesses um, for the wrong reasons yep. and, and they didn't succeed and they didn't succeed for a number of reasons but 100% one of them was, was me and yep. my lack of confidence and my lack of so I was like I need this business partner so I went into these businesses um, and and opened myself up to be kind of used to an extent to to, to and and to be kind of abused in a, in a, in yep. a way yep. and and the only person i can blame for that is is myself none of the business partners i worked with because another thing that i say to the guys all the time business is nothing about nothing but being used yeah we use everybody the the, the trick is is to find somebody who has an ethical and moral standard that's not going to go too you. far yeah, yeah, yeah. and b how much are you prepared to allow yourself to be used to get what you need because business is about that i'm going to do this so i can get that i'm well, going to every, work selfish right We're yeah, all 100%, doing, even even 100 like for anyone like when i bought you flowers i didn't actually yeah. flowers, <laughs> but i did that for a selfish reason reason because it makes me feel good even yeah. though it makes you feel good yeah selfishly it fucking makes Absolutely. me feel good and that's right and so i'm sitting there and i'm like going i got into business with these people and my lack of confidence allowed them to take more from me than I was prepared to give and to take less from them than I should have. Mm-hmm. So, and it was that fear of failure. It was like, fuck, I'm not good enough. I'm not fucking, that's, if it fucks up, what do I yep. do? And so I did it once, you know, do it once, shame on you. Do it twice, shame on me. So I went into one business, got used, got abused. It fucked up. I walked away and I'm like, fuck, this is shit. Went out on my own. It wasn't really big. Didn't want to grow it. was terrified to grow it. Got into another business. Got a, went into another business partnership. Yep. This business, business got massive, got huge, was really, really successful. I'm like, look, this is great. Never happy in it because I was like, I'm not getting what I need out of this. Yep. And I'm not getting out of need out of it because I'm not doing me. I'm not being true to me. But my lack of confidence and not fucking up meant to stay where you are. This is comfortable. Yep. Yeah. There's so many people listening who oh. fucking resonate oh. with that. They're like, probably nodding their head uh. going, and so, and, and this is it. If it makes you feel any better, that second time cost me in cash about $80,000 and a massive multidisciplinary mm. clinic. Yeah. And to make you feel better if you're sitting there going, fuck it, that's 
that's that's that shit. Yeah, I I I royally fucked up that one up. I fucking hell, you know what I mean. So and and to give you the last context of it, it all came to a head in about an hour. So I literally was like about a year of going. This is bullshit. I'm being used. This is crap. This is crap. This is crap. And then it all came to a head. And in an hour conversation, so you, it went from me being a part owner in this massive business to walked out the door. So, ah, uh, right. So, what was it in the lead up to that year that you, were you was it the failure you were fearful of that stopped you? Fire alarm, run! <laughs> Wait, this is live action happening here. It's actually the doorbell, and it's probably Australia Post. <laughs> right, and we're not cutting this. This is no, this is, this is as it goes. <laughs> That's it. I love it, but. You know, this is, and it was, so so I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, and it, it was my fault, because I knew I wasn't happy, but I'm like, Well, you let it run through. on for a year, that's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's not actually bad in the grand scheme yeah. of things. That's right. Oh, there's a, they're turning off, have, they're, yeah, they're turning off the thing. I didn't know you could turn that off, that's awesome. That's, uh, we learned something new today. We have If anyone has those kind of big, big doorbell thingies look on the side of it there could be a switch to turn it off i should have actually thought about that (laughs) (laughs) never anyway anyway but yeah so i'm sitting there and i'm I'm getting closer by the way i know i'm kind of kind of really kind of sinking into this This we may be here a while um (laughs) but we so i'm here and i'm like and it was my fault because i'm like i'm not happy but i'm pushing through and pushing through because and look for for the spiritual guys out there it was the universe going mate stop being a dickhead and it was a little tap on the shoulder 12 months previously and by the end it was a massive kick in the nuts mm. going right i'm sick of waiting and it That's just what happened oh 100 like, like square to the nuts the universe comes and goes i'm sick of fucking waiting. how many it's, it would yeah. have, it's happened so many times where i'm like i fucking knew i should have done that oh, six months like ago. it was so i'm sitting in there and and i'm not going to go into the nitty-gritty because it's boring and no one needs to hear it, but i turned up into work called into a meeting an hour at the end of that meeting i literally went i'm out i handed over my my control of the business i didn't require my buy-in i didn't require how much money i put into it how much money was owed to me i just said it's yours walked out eighty thousand dollars what was going through your mind at that point in time when you were walking out honestly honestly and i know this sounds a bit like one of those kind of like fucking Hollywood ending movies where the sun comes out and everything but I was so relieved why the moment I walked out because I took responsibility and I took the power of it fuck yeah like I legitimately 100% had 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 fucked another business I had put two three years into this business building it not mine I had I had spent money I had pumped about 80 grand and it's not my money. Like, this is, the, you know, I wife and a small kid. It's their money. Yeah. Our money. Our future into it. 80 grand gone. I had I had kind of sacrificed time with my family. I was doing six a day a week, seven day weeks. I was working, you know. And so it was fucked. But I just remember walking out the door, probably the happiest I'd been in 12 months. The relief was just palatable like i could taste it it was the fucking greatest thing and it was it was the universe kicking me in the nuts going you my friend are being a dickhead sort your life out i walked out so i left there on a friday by monday i had start running so start training my my business start had always run in the background i'd always maintained it but i'd never again i was never confident to be just start training i always looked for other people to work with um, by Monday, Star Training was running as its own entity. It was the only thing I was in. By the end of that week, I had already 40, 50 clients booked in. By the end of the month, I was full with a wait list. And I just went from there. I just went, uh, fuck right. it, I'm in. So I was running it all myself again, which was concerning. Yep. Now, I should say that at this time, I got home on the Friday. I told Claudia what I'd you done. smash a few pints? Oh, fuck, mate, we... I, before I drank, I, I got home. I told 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 my wife what I had done. And what, ma- what did she say in that? She just hugged me, gave me a kiss, and went, "Thank fuck, it's about time." Because she saw the stress and the burden that I was carrying, 
And she saw the stress and the burden that I carried, not because of what I was doing, but also the kind of, I don't want to be a failure to my family. I'm the one yep. that's meant to be there to Provided, support them. Yeah, yeah. So she saw all of that. Do you know what I mean? That I'm the weight that I carried. And, emo- and she was just delighted. You know, because in this, I will tell you one thing that I have learned and and some people will agree. Some people go, you're a fucking idiot. But what I've learned through that process and those two business processes is money is not important. What I have learned is if you're good enough and you know what you're talking about, and you have integrity and you have passion, you will always find money. 100 percent. And my problem was my fear of failure, because if I fail, the clinic doesn't work. I don't make any money. We'll be on the streets. I'm a failure as a dad for not providing for my child. I'm a failure as a husband for not providing a roof. Because it all comes down to money. So I'm like, money, 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 money. But then I like, for what purpose do you want money, you know? But that's it. But what I learned is if you're good, if you're focused, if you're passionate, if you're driven, money will always come. You will always make it. Yep. So don't let money be the reason why you don't make these decisions. Learn from my mistake. Fuck, I wasted so much time. <clears throat> well, I think about even when I was doing network marketing before the Man at Cam project and everything was about money because I didn't mm. have money. So I was constantly Ooh. just like, how can I do it? I never did anything out of it. Like I always listened to my gut, but even yeah. like in the lead up to filling out the recent workshop, I turned away 10 people, which is a lot of money. Yeah. I could have been like, fuck it, I'll just take the money. But I knew from integrity, from getting results for people and making sure yeah. everyone got value. I was like, it's not fucking worth the money to yeah. have to deal with all the stuff, the crap that comes with it. But human human connection and human interaction and stuff you find is far more important. Like this is what we were talking about right at the beginning when we were testing. We probably should have been recording. We should have been recording. probably recording. Quick quick summary of what we talked about for like twenty minutes before we said, oh, we should probably uh, push yeah, the button. I was like, <laughs> was you know, one of the big things when everything is going wrong and everything is a disaster and everything's just fucking up and you're 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 inwardly looking because you're like, what with me? What am I doing? How is everything so bad? Is is you give human connection is the key you can't give and you can't um you can't support and you can't help other people Mm -hmm. and be selfish Mm -hmm. and be introvertedly or invertedly looking into yourself with this woe with me problem you know what i mean so one of the things i learned from that is is the key to success is to give and and the key to success is to give for two reasons I don't know where that that came from. So the key to success is give for two reasons. One, if you're going, I'm shit and everything's shit and the world is shit and I hate hate everything about life at the moment, no one wants to be around you. You 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 exude... You don't even want to be around you. No, fuck no. I didn't want to be around me. You exude this negative energy where people are like, I'm good. Subconsciously, you make that decision that I don't want to be near them. So the one thing you're trying to get you're pushing away you know whether it be clients business business partnerships whatever it is the more negative you are the more you're pushing what it is you want away the second thing you will find is that when you give when you put out there you 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 learn that you get you get it given back yep. you yeah, and call it what you want call it the, the universe providing call it chemical whatever you want but when you stop that internalization and you start going, do you know what? I'm just going to give this and see what happens. The the return you receive is is, is significantly better. And it's one thing I've always found. Yep. So when it came back to the whole money, you know, I find that if you just have the right moral alignment, money will always come. Stop worrying about it. it was, And I, this is what I found. I found if I gave more, if I said, this is me now, I'm putting myself out there. And, and and it's a it's I guess a mantra or it's a directive I send to the to my clinicians all the time at the clinic, you know, especially the new clinicians. When you when you come in, never worry about price and never worry about cost. There's so much out there, and you, there's so much you know business modeling and hustle. You know, to hustle and value yourself and value your price, and you charge this because you know something. And you have university students coming out four year degrees, universities telling going, "You're intelligent. Yeah. You know shit. Don't fucking undervalue yourself. You've done four year, fucking spend money, right? You have to prove yourself." that you're worth it you have to build your reputation so i have always turned around and i do it myself to this day is be concerned with the patient not the paycheck 
when you're talking about all of this in a clinic, it is my personal opinion, and I'm sure there's all these business gurus that'll crack the fucking shits and go, oh, he's bullshit, and blah, blah, blah. but mm. you focus on the, the, the patients. I would far prefer, and I have said it to my, to my guys in the clinic, probably daily, I would far prefer them to have 10 patients in the, in the clinic in a day and charge them 50 bucks mm -hmm. than to have five patients and charge, and charge them 100 bucks. Yep. Because two things you're giving, you're dealing with more people. The more people you deal with, the more people you're in front of, the more chance you have to show how good and amazing and brilliant and wonderful you are, yep. the more people they're going to tell. And that snowballs. I mean, you, you'd you understand that from the, the network marketing. Yep. It's a it's a numbers game. 100%. You know, five people tell, 50 people tell, you tell. The more people that know about you, the, the more it snowballs. Yep. But most importantly, most importantly, when you shift your mentality from the price, going, I'm worth $100, to I'm worth you seeing, I'm good enough to help you. What you find is you, you portray that to the person. So yeah, the person absolutely. walking into the medical clinic is going, well, he's interested in me. Well, because because you're there to yeah. prove that I can fix you. Yeah. You are my important. I don't care what you pay. I know that I can help you. I know. And, and, and then you get the reputation as the guy that can. Exactly right. That's exactly it. Because your focus is on the patient. Yep. And, you know, and that was, that was a lesson learned, quite interestingly enough, from fucking up that second business and losing all that money. Yep. It was to stop worrying about money. Focus on the, 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 the human side of it. You know what I mean? That's fucking... Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly... It's, I used to... Same thing. When I was in network marketing, I was focused solely on... I can hold a few more. There you go. <sighs> you take over. I've got this. That's hand for That's free. It. But it, it was the exact same thing. Like, for me, now, I don't think about the money. Like, I, I've... Ma most successful I've been financially in my life but I never it never comes down to that every person that walks in the door I either either sorry know I can help them and I'll fucking do whatever it takes yeah. to help them or if I don't think I can I'm not going to work with yeah. you because it's not about the money because there's it's once again it's like I'm here to help people because I know I can and because you can that's right and, and you have a responsibility to, to do that yeah when you know you can do it yeah. you have a responsibility to do it exactly and then you so know. it's just built and that's how like your business, my business is continuing to grow because yeah. of the word of mouth of the results that you're delivering. That's right. That's and exactly it, right. And as a result, you become more booked or there's yeah. more people seeking you out, which the, is... The greatest the greatest compliment that I've got, and I heard it twice this, this week in the clinic, which is, is it, it it makes me really happy and it, it allows me to know that I'm on the right track yep. and that what I'm doing is right. I've had two, two, two patients this week, two clients this week, tell me that... You know, they love coming into the clinic because of the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going, oh, your team is so good. And the atmosphere is so, so just happy and lively and bubbly. And like, you know, your guys are just mad, but it's so good. And we love being in here. Yep. That's, that makes me happy. That makes me go, that's where success comes from. Well, it's bigger than the, the monetary thing. A hundred percent it is. a workplace where people get yeah. connection. Yeah. Enjoyment. Money will always come. Come. Money will go as well, so, as yeah. I've proved. You'll fucking you'll lose money. But it's it's something you can always make more of. And yeah. It's, it's yes, yeah, exactly. You can always make but more it's money. It's the one thing that so many of us allow to define us is yeah. like what we have in the bank. And here's yeah. the thing, right? Like I was saying this to Amy last night because I went and saw Russell uh, Russell Brand. Oh, I love that man. Oh, that mate. man is just fucking amazing. Oh, he's unbelievable. Was but, he doing the comedy show or his like well, existential no, kind his, of? It was his recovery to us. They're talking about his yeah. twelve step. Yeah. But just being him, him, being him, it was hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, it was so. I'm sure. I'm certain he's building towards a Netflix special. I hope so. Mate, I fucking to, love him. Has to be. He is quality. He is. <laughs> he, yeah, it was good. But um. Well, yeah, when I, when we were driving home, I was talking to Amy. I was like, I thought like, and I did a video on this yesterday. Like, eighteen months ago, the position I'm in, um, with the the, the people seeking me out for for help, the people that I get mm. to help, the the feeling of being needed, and um, the the financial stuff, all that stuff was exactly where I wanted to be. Yeah. Right. But I also thought at this point in time, I was like, I'll when I get there, I'll surf more and I'll I'll do all these things mm. more. But the the, the real challenge. For 
for me and I think is for everyone, it's not about getting more of what you think you want. Yes. It's about how do you start doing those things in your life yeah. right now. That's how do you enjoy it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Careful but, what you wish for, you yeah. might get it. Because if, if, you, if you can't, like for me, for now, if I can't, you know, surf right now with what's mm. going on in my life, I'm fucking definitely yeah. not going to be able to do it when I've got yeah. more responsibility and more money and more mouths. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the, I think this is, I think this is the point that I was making earlier on is everything happens when it's meant to happen. Mm-hmm. Chill the fuck out. Does that make sense? I think one of, one of the takeaways that I would say today is if you're in a point where you feel you need to force it, like the surfing, Okay, fuck, I'm not surfing now. I need to get more surfing. What it does is it creates a pressure of why am I surfing? I exactly. need to make more surfing. If I'm not surfing, I'm not getting it. Um, and what it does is it creates this pressure, and this pressure leads to this anxiety. Whereas yeah. what I'm saying is if you're not doing it right now, you're not meant to be. Calm the fuck down. Chill out. Does that make sense? Like, it, this falls in line, and another example of this, and I say this, and I fucking love saying this to the practice students, and they look at me as if I've got fucking three heads, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, you know, this idea, and I'll phrase it like this, you know, this idea of, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Mm. I call bullshit. Mm. Purely because I've worked in a industry that I love, and I'm passionate about. And I, I'm going to go back to that one because I, was, I wasn't actually originally going to do this. But remind me about that. That's a different story. We, we tangent. <laughs> tangent. But anyway, my point is, I love what I do. But fuck me, it's hard work. There are days, there's three days this week I woke up at 4.30 going, what are you doing? Going, I don't oh, want to do it. I don't want to do it. Time yeah. Saying the same thing. And that's it. I don't want to do it. I'm just going to cancel today. And what got me through was going to clients because, you know, I love what I do. So I say this to the to the, to the, to the, the practice students. And I think it's a problem with the psyche today is they're going, if I do what I love, I never work a day in my life. So if it feels like I'm working, I'm not doing what I love. So I need to find something else. Something else, yeah. Which is amazing. Because right now they're like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing what I love. I need to find it. You're like, it doesn't matter. Right now is what you need to be doing right now. Yeah. And and it leads on to what I was saying there. Like, if you're not doing what you want to be doing right now, you're not meant to be. Everything leads forward. And, and it follows on for what I said at the beginning. You need to do what you need to do right now. And in, in five years' time, that may shift. Yep. And be fluent enough to recognize when the shift is needed. Yeah. But if you feel that you have to force yourself now, then it's not meant to happen. Yeah. I... I have been through a lot of adversity in my life. I've dealt with a lot of fa- failures, as I've talked about. I've, a lot of businesses went fucking shit. I, you know, university was tough. I spent four years through university. I put myself through to pay for it. My parents were amazing and wonderful and can never repay them for what they did, but they didn't have a lot of money, so they couldn't pay for it. So I paid for my own rent, my own tuition, everything. So I went days without eating, two, three days without food, sleeping around. No, f- I, I went about fucking eight months paying rent late I actually ended up paying more rent than the other guys in my house because I used to give rent check so as old I am I was paying check back then I know yeah fuck yeah oh mate (laughs) so I used to pay rent check knowing that it wasn't going to clear because I had no money in my account they would they would cash a check the check would bounce then they would get a, uh, a charge from the bank but I knew because it it fell in like paydays so I knew that when rent was due was like three days before payday so i'd give them the check they'd bounce the check Dude. then i'd pay the rent four days later and Some the fine <laughs> so i oh. ended up paying rent more rent than the rest of my my um flatmates because my checks bounced every time so much so i remember the, i remember his name he was this awesome old indian guy he must have been about 174 and uh he was fucking awesome he it got so it got to the point that he stopped cashing my checks he knew he and was... would ring me to ask me when he cashed the check. What a good man! Oh, mate, it was amazing. But you know, so I've been through these adversity. I've been through these things, and and what I can tell you is, when it's meant to happen, it'll be easy. It will happen. Now you've known me for you know two years, whatever. You can see that in me in my clinic time. Now is the time to drop my hours and you can see in myself I'm so much more calmer about it and you asked me before we started you know are you a bit stressed or anxious about dropping hours 16 years of doing stu-? and I was like no I'm good 
Hmm. Because now is the time to do it. It's interesting. 12 months ago wasn't because we talked about this and I was like, fuck, I'm anxious as fuck to do this. That's what was intriguing because a lot of people say things and they never do it. Yeah. As well, they don't, they go, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. Or they'll do it. Nah, next yeah. year. Or they'll do it and it will cause more problems. Mm. Like how many times have you talked to somebody like, oh, I wish I had a different job. I'm going to change jobs. I'm going to do something and do it. And they're more miserable than they were. Because they never ask themselves. Why? What exactly? It's like, like you were saying before, um, it's like not everyone's fortunate to do what they love. And every, mm. like, I feel we're both in the same position yeah. where we love what we do, but fuck, I'm the same as you this week. I've got like, yeah. this. Like, <laughs> don't feel like doing yeah. it, but you do it. Anyway, you get through it. But it's a journey to get there as well. Like, don't... Another thing to, I say to students, I'm like, it's bullshit. Do what you love. You never work a day in life. Is, is, is a, me not working a it's day in my life is sitting quote. on a beach yeah. drinking Mai Tais. And even that's fucking boring. And that's boring as fuck. Exactly yeah. right. But the thing about it is as well, like, don't be in pressure to get there. So what I was saying, the, the tangent from before, I wasn't going to do this job at all. I went to university got through university for those playing at home I was diagnosed as dyslexic in my second year of university yeah. so I went through all of high school with the you know he tries hard he's just not smart enough or the fuck he's really intelligent he's just lazy because I failed everything just continuously so which one were you? oh I was a bit about not gonna lie the, the subjects I liked I was he's intelligent just lazy the subjects I didn't like is going he tries hard he's just shit <laughs> <laughs> or it could have been the other way around but my point is like I got through school I was dyslexic I knew I was I knew I was smarter than all of my exams told me I was and yeah. that was the frustrating thing for me so what it led to is it led to a a uh, what's the word I'm looking for like I don't want to say hatred hatred's a way too strong a word but a resentment, a resentment. Oh. exactly the right word Dropped that's w- that's why we work yeah. well. <laughs> a resentment to academia before I even got to university. Um, so got to university, um, was diagnosed dyslexic, I have a lecturer in my second year, I owe him everything, can't remember his name, how oh, shit am I? <laughs> I just but owe him his name. I just owe him fucking everything. Um, I, I handed in, I submitted a coursework, he called me into his office, he goes, oh man, I just want to chat about the coursework, he goes, really good, really insightful, haven't seen anybody think about the, the, the problem like this before. So I've gone, A, he's gone, fuck no. He's gone, mate, I, I flat out was able to pass you because I couldn't read it. And I was, I was like, what do you mean? He goes, it's terrible. He said, it looks like it's been written by a 12-year-old. He was like, if I gave this to somebody not as part of this module, they would ask me why I'm giving them a 12-year-old. And I'm looking at him going, it's a bit harsh, mate. Don't yeah. you think? It's like, calm down. And he did. He turns around and goes, look, I'm not having a go. He said, 100%, this is not me having a go. He said, I think there's a problem. I was like, all right. So he sent me off to a guy he knew in the, in a, a girl he knew in the psychology war, uh, psychology department at, at university. And they did all the testing. And it comes back going, yeah, you are proper dyslexic. Like, you are you are way out there. So I was like, oh, that explains a lot. <laughs> so, so this is my second year of university. So it turned out that what happened, which is rather common for dyslexics, is uh, you develop this, this really, really strong long-term memory. It's almost like an idyllic memory for for listening and for actions yeah so it turned out that i was getting through exams because i'd rock up to a lecture not write anything because i couldn't do that didn't read anything because that just really frustrated me but i'd remember everything they said in the lecture and then four months later just regurgitated in the exam <laughs> the problem was they only ever teach 60 percent of the content in the uh... lecture so i was never getting very good grades um but anyway so I hated academia. I, I was I was resentful. By the time I finished university, I'm like, I'm out. I'm done. I'm fucking done. I hate this profession. I hate this career. To, I'll, I'll let you oh, look at you. Yeah, we'll pass Use it back. Yeah. So I was like, I hate, I hate what I do. So I was not going to get into this profession. I was out. I was working in a pub. I was managing a pub. I would do stuff on the side, 100%. I would work with football clubs. And because I yep. that was enjoyable to me. Yep. But I was like, clinical work and all that. I, no. Nah. Hated. hated it because I just had such a bad experience with the academia side of it the learning side of it um, and as I said it was, it was Claudia that, that turned it all around if it wasn't for her me sitting here and doing what I do and the people that I've helped just would never have happened yep. but tying it all in together into a nice little bow 
when I left university at 23, 24 years of age, at that time, what I'm doing now is not what I needed to be doing then. Correct. Does that make sense? Like, at 24 years of age, I was not sitting there going, fuck, I'm going to be this clinical owner in Australia and it's yeah. going to be amazing and I'm going to be looked at as one of the leading the leading specialists in the field that I work in and I'm going to have all these people going, you know. I hated it. I was out. I didn't want to do it. Yeah. I was fucking over it. I was running. I was working in a pub. And that is what I needed to do at, at that, that time. Point. Do you know what I mean? And then over the course of the next 16 to 17 years, it changed. Mm. And then I went from working in a pub to, I came out here, 24 years of age, um, 24 years of age, on a working holiday visa. So I couldn't work clinical anyway, because I couldn't get any registrations because I'm a holiday visa. Yep, yep, yep. So I worked at a good life as a membership consultant. Yeah, selling, se- good selling, good selling memberships. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then went from there to managing because they're like, fuck, you're pretty Good. switched on what you do. So I went to managing the, the clubs. And then from there, um, I got to know the, 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 national, the national manager at the time. And he approached me to write uh, a PT course. He had a, there was a private college being set up. Yep. And he wanted me to write the syllabus. So I ended up writing the syllabus, which is, when you think about it, is, is fucking the irony and hilarious. This epically <laughs> dyslexic person has to it's write writing, this yeah, fucking 12-week yeah. course. I had to read two textbooks, summarize them and put them into, oh, it was epic, but did that. Uh, that was one of the failed businesses, by the way. Um, and then Does from, that explain the quality of some people? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, no, not, not mine. Mine are amazing. <laughs> I must have gone through yours. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so from there, then I went from the college to, to obviously um, working with, with patients at the time yep. because people are like, fuck, you're, you seem to know what you're talking about. Do you mm. mind? Have a look at my knee or my mom's knee or my whatever's knee, you know. So I went from teaching to then teaching and treating. And then, I, and, and that's how I got back into it. Yep. I lost my passion for it completely at the end of university. And then through a side door, I got back to, to teaching. I got yep. to teach people how to do it. And I think that was the key for me because I hated academia so much that what was the logical thing to do? Become a lecturer. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking, like it's insane if you think about it. Progression. But I think that that's what changed it because I was now the other side of it. Yep. I could appreciate it more. And then from there I started training and then stop teaching, only work clinical. And now here I am. So the point is, is, is stop fucking worrying about what, yeah. where you need to be and stop worrying about are, am I in the right place for 10 years time because it's going to fucking change anyway because it'll change anyway be the best that you can be at this moment and the because is- it's where you need to be at this moment and I can say that because when it's not trust me the universe will kick you in the nuts <laughs> for those who don't have nuts this It'll is very kick true. you in the ass. It will kick you in the ass, one hundred percent. We don't want to discriminate. But since this is a men's health uh, channel, please <laughs> share it with someone who does have nuts. Yeah, yeah. In my in my in my yeah. defence, so everybody's aware, in my clinic I have 15, 15 team members. The administrative manager is a female. The two IC is a female. Both senior clinicians are females. Just so we're clear. Yeah. It'll still kick you in the ass. The universe <laughs> will no. tell you what to do when you need to do it. Kind of stop stressing about it. Be focused, be driven. And I think I think that's another thing. See, tangents. See, that's another thing. People confuse um, drive and focus with stress and anxiety. Mm. And what mm. I mean by that, I mean it the other way around. I mean, they, they're stressed and anxious, but they think it's drive and focus. Does that make sense? They're like the hustle. Because you listen to all these self-help books and these motor. Uh, it's all about the hustle. Started, you know, if you're, if, if you're sleeping, your competitor's working. You know, if you fucking don't want to succeed more than you want to sleep, you'll fail. Fuck Less off. is more, man. Like, uh, yeah. Trust me, from a person who doesn't sleep a lot, sleep is good. Uh, Do I've, sleep. Be sleep. Be, you know, be sleep. Be sleep. It, but do you know what I mean? So I think one of the biggest problems we have now is... We, we we confuse drive and we con- we confuse focus or we confuse anxiety and stress as drive and focus. 
You know, be relaxed, be confident that where you are right now is where you need to be and be driven and focused to be the best that you can be in that moment. Yeah. And stop trying to go, I'll be here, I'll be here. You know what I mean? I think it was Tim Minchin. I love this 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 speech by Tim Minchin. He, he's giving a university kind of uh, graduation speech, and yep. it's, it's amazing. But one of the points that he says is he goes, I don't believe in long-term goals. I'm a proponent of short-term validation. And he, because he turns around and he goes, when your focus is on the long-term goal, when you're you going miss. in 10 years, I'm going to be here, you miss the opportunities that sit on the periphery. You know, and I, I love that because that's so true. When you are so kind of like, I must be here in 10 years, yep. I have to be here, and you ignore where you are right now, you miss those opportunities. It's like I said to you, said to you before when you're introvert when you're internally looking because you're stressed and you're going what would mean yeah. the world is shit what's happening um this person who taught me this actually it's a shout out to a guy called rex Irwin, uh, amazing <laughs> guy um the way he put it to me he goes mate i'm gonna break the news to you now he says while you've been like because i was having trouble right at the beginning building up everything I was like, I'm fucked, and I need more work, and I need more business, and I need everything. And he turns around, he goes, mate, I'm going to let you in on a secret. And he goes, what's that? He goes, you've missed about 30 opportunities while you've been like this. And I've gone, what the fuck? He goes, but don't worry about it, because oh. there's more come along every day. But he said, when you are so internally fucking, this is shit, and where I'm now is crap, but in five years I'll be here. You're missing the people that are knocking on the door exactly does that make sense and you don't really know what it is that you want anyway when yeah. you get to that point that's why most people don't feel fucking fulfilled and satisfied when they get there and we it, got about five minutes left because I got a call soon <laughs> sorry sorry to cut you guys five short minutes. I've uh, got a question for you go what do, and we haven't even chatted about this one so this will be very oh, very interesting for those minutes. playing at home the, Maybe, the tape might just go blank. Yeah. We're just going to talk. I'm just going to fade to darkness. Like, no response. No comment. No comment. <laughs> what does being a man mean to you? I think I... Oh, it's a great question. Could have could have worn it. I know, one. man. I As I was thinking about saying it, I was like, something that I always ask the gents, but... Uh, I think being a man... I think being a man is being true to you. Mm-hmm. I think... I think being a man is accepting that who you are now is not who you'll be tomorrow. I think the true essence of being a man is the ability to be fluent Mm -hmm. and to be adaptable, Mm -hmm. but yet to still be strong in their convictions and their confidence in himself. That's being a man. It's that's fucking brilliant. So almost using who you are today to reflect upon, to see which areas you'd like to change for the future. Absolutely. But most importantly is it's the man in the past that is the most important. Mm. So when you're here today, you are focused on being the best and you move forward. So the ability to look back and to learn from where you've been from that journey, that ability to not be hypercritical, but be thankful. Mm -hmm. As I said, embrace the failure. Look for the failure because that's where... That's where the learning is. That's where the lessons yep. come from, you know. And that's where you need to be. You need to be the big enough man, as they say, but a big enough man to look back at yourself and be thankful for the failures that you've had, mm-hmm. as opposed to being hypercritical of yourself. That's a true man. See, and time to spare. All right. So where can where can, <laughs> where can people find you? Mate, our clinic is uh, up in Stafford, so uh, Star Training is uh, it's a multidisciplinary clinic, uh, ex-phys, physiotherapy, um, strength and conditioning. We're up in Babara Street uh, in, in, in Stafford, just up on the north side. Is it Babara? I always thought it was Barbara. No, Babara. <laughs> Babara. It's just off time. Webster Road. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wilston Grange AFL Club. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's in Brisbane are. for those that's who aren't in Brisbane. In Brisbane. And social channels? Uh, we do have social channels. So you put me on the yeah. thing. I am, I, and he knows this. I am useless with social. I have somebody who does, does it. That, yeah. Yeah. Is, so, you know, our Instagram, oh. Star Training. 
Uh, I'll drop the link soon. Yeah, I'm going to get lucky to do it because I, I can actually hear the girl who does my social media going, you fucking idiot. One thing <laughs> you should have known to be prepared for. You should have known you you're an idiot. It. And I will accept my failure in such things and rely on Lockie to and rely on Lockie to put them up and it'll be fine. And finally in a short, sharp sentence, what would be one piece of advice you would give your eighteen year old self? Chill out. Relax. Cool. Be fluent. Who you are now is not who you're meant to be, but it's who you're meant to be right now. Ooh. That's what I would say, because I was, I was a fucking useless stress case. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paul. Love it. It's been fucking pleasure, and we'll be doing more. Because Mate, it has been I awesome. We could just, oh. This could have been a Joe Rogan length episode. I, I reckon tangents. Really? Oh, I've just got started. <laughs> We're only at Mate, one. I love your work. Thank, Thank you, you, buddy. Bro. It's good. Thank you for listening to the Man That Can Project podcast. My name is Lockie Stewart and I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful. If you did, please take a moment to rate and review the Man That Can Project on your favorite podcast platform and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with our newest episodes. We'll see you again next time.